He is an entrepreneur, he is a business owner, and he has dedicated his life to bettering the lives of others. He's Gabriel McClover. I'm John Bradshaw, and this is our conversation. Gabriel, thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, my pleasure. A moment ago, I said you've dedicated yourself to bettering the lives of others. Mm -hmm. Quickly, how? Um, well, we do that in a number of different ways. Now, let me back up a little bit. What, what has made me passionate about health is, you know, when we um, started understanding about health principles and I started uh, changing my diet and my lifestyle, I saw that um, I had family members who were dying from diseases that can easily be reversed. Mm -hmm. And so it really put a passion, not only myself, but my wife, to start to create um, different avenues that we can share the things that we've learned. Um, so we started doing um, different cooking classes and things in our, in our community, and then it just continued to grow. And then I was able to use some different um, techniques and things I learned from my business background to really start to, to make an, a, a greater impact. Okay, I wanna ask you about entrepreneurialism, what you're doing, I wanna ask you about that business background, how you ended up where you are, what you're seeing. I mean, you do this for a reason, what's the reason? The proof surely is in the pudding, so what's the proof? Let's back up. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Where, where, did you, where do you come from and what was life like for you as a young person? Well, I'm originally from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I grew up in a, uh, a Christian home. And uh, we were very, very um, competitive because we were all involved in sports. Okay. Uh, my brother um, played uh, football. He played Division One football. He actually played in the NFL for some time. Played in the NFL. Uh, I played Division One football up in Buffalo, New York. My younger brother played Division One football in um, down in uh, Florida at Florida Atlantic. That's three brothers, all Division One yep. football players. And then my sister. Um, had a Division One scholarship to run track. Have mercy. So you can imagine a household with four hyper, hyperly competitive individuals. Oh yeah. And our my father was very um, instrumental in our upbringing, teaching us about hard work, and my seeing my wa mom as well, just hardworking individuals, and uh, it really it really um, impacted us. What so position you know, did you play? I played wide receiver. So oh. you see my big hands. Hey, how about I, that? I like to. Catch, yeah. catch passes. Division, so Division one football. The interesting thing about football in America, if you are fortunate enough, and I'll you put it that way, to play in college, yeah. unless you're one of the point something or other percent to go to the NFL, it's over after that. Yeah. It's over. It's it college really is. and goodbye. You're, you're 22 years old, whatever you are, you're full of energy, and it's, but you've got pickleball to look forward to. That's right. That's right. And that's, you know, my, you know, in the NFL, and they say NFL stands for not for long, right? Yeah. Because, you know, you you know that this is just the, the attrition and the hits and things. It's not very, it's yeah. not going to last very no, long. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. And, and, and a team that does so well at the beginning of the season, what happened to them? Well, they got banged up. Yep. So many injuries. That's I heard right. some team this season on its fourth quarterback. That's right. That's, I mean, you have a deep depth chart to be able to function on your fourth quarterback. No question. No question. When the football days were over, did you miss it? Um, I miss the, the environment, the camaraderie, the teamwork, um, and the games. Yeah. Practice, training, not so not much. Not so much. Not but, so much. But that part of it was something that I missed. Mm -hmm. And so when I, when I left college, I got into sales. And, um, and so you still had that camaraderie. You still had goals. You still had things. And I had a lot to learn. And so that environment kind of projected over there. Mm -hmm. So sales, what, 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 do you, what do you find yourself doing? So I did everything. My first sales job was a straight commission job. And I was right out of college. My uh, girlfriend at the time, now my wife, she was pregnant. And so I had to really make a choice on following my, you know, my path with football because I got injured my senior year. So there was another route for me to potentially Canadian football, those things, or right. to go directly into um, into uh, into to the corporate world. Now, let so, me ask you about this. So your brother, it's your older brother. Yeah, older yeah. brother. So he he he. The NFL wasn't um, an unknown foreign world for you. You'd be you'd seen it up close. That's right. You saw. Did you like what you see? You said, I, I could maybe. I, I would like to have a crack at that. Or did you see? Mm, um, how how oh, old were you about it? When you when you're training and you have these aspirations when you're younger, you want to have a bite of that apple to have an opportunity to go to the highest level sure. and to, to kind of prove yourself. 
But looking back, I think it was the best thing for me when I got injured because there was a lot of traps and things that people don't even realize sure. that when you get into that world that you that you can be exposed to. And if you and man, I've seen people get swallowed up. And I'm just I'm I, I am very thankful to God that He put me on a different direction. And I went and start learning different principles. Not that I'm now using using now yeah. um, to further to, to really further the message of health and to, to work for God. So you feel like you had a good education? Yeah, you didn't, I do. You didn't freeze to death up there in Buffalo? No, Buffalo, New York, is, you, know, you see, we see in recent things, five feet of snow. It was, I went from, again, think about this, Florida, Fort yeah, Lauderdale. Oh yeah, Fort Lauderdale. It's Beach, the, sand, yeah, it's, sun. Yeah, it's hot all year round oh, yeah. to Buffalo, New York. Now, when I went on my recruiting visit, oh, yeah. it was snowing. Oh, it was but it was snowing, and but what back. I what I thought was, you know, so I never, I mean, I really didn't travel much. I thought Buffalo, New York, and New York City was like right Same. next to each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I went out, get up, I'm like, when are we going to New York City? They're oh, like, yeah. oh, that's like six to eight hours. Uh -huh. Got to go through the Adirondacks, upstate New York, and then then you get to New. I'm like, and then I'm sitting there out the window, and you just look in, and you got homesick, and all you see is snow, yeah. five feet of snow, and you're so, basically in Canada. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, right there. It's 30, right. 30 minutes from Niagara Falls. Uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So there you are. You're done with college. You thought about CFL and so forth. Mm -hmm. Got into sales. Yeah. Where were you going? Did you know? <laughs> I had no clue. No. I, and, my, and my thought was I wanted to support my family. Sure. So my goal was that was my goal. I didn't know it was going to end up with you know, the career path. Even what I'm doing now, I would have never thought about that because some of the companies I work for, I thought I was going to retire. You know, mm -hmm. I said, oh man, this is perfect. I have a, I have the, the career path. I have, you know, a really a career track. I know I'm, I'm nowhere I'm going to be, but God just suddenly just took me out of that into a different direction. Let's zoom forward and then zoom back. Mm -hmm. So today you run a restaurant. That's right. Today you help people improve their health. That's right. Uh, give me another, in your words, what else, what else are you doing in the area of health? So we are also doing a, uh, what we call a healthy taste. Healthy mm -hmm. taste is a plant-based veg fest. So being that we're in the restaurant industry, and this is what we started our restaurant back in 2016 in Somerville, Georgia. And as we were, we would go out to promote our business, we would go to these veg fests. Yep. And they're all over the country. They draw tens of thousands of people. And I noticed that their emphasis was primarily on animal rights, activism. That's right. sure. And then I'm at the booth there and I'm like, well, I'm telling people, sharing people that the food that we make is not vegan junk food. Um, this food that actually helps to reverse chronic lifestyle diseases. And people would look at this like, oh, I thought, I thought veganism was all about animal rights. I find it so interesting. I'm a vegan myself and uh -huh. I find it so interesting when I hear people what they think vegans are lunatics and, and yeah. activistic and all they want is to make you stop wearing leather and, and, and so that's forth. Right. And I mean, that's cool if that's what people are into, but that's a very narrow slice very of people who slice. are eating a, on a plant-based diet for the benefit of the health and even their spiritual health. That's right. So you were coming up against that same thing. Yeah. So I was like, I'm at the event. I'm like, you know, I was like, you know what? I think we can do this event better, uh -huh. but focus more on the health sure. side of it. So that's where that's where the idea. So the healthy taste, we call it healthy taste because we want people to see the healthier side of eating plant based. And that's 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 the other thing that we're doing in the community. And as I've well. been to one of your events mm -hmm. and it was outstanding. And I thought, well, this thing can be a thousand times bigger. Oh, yeah. And I hope it is. Yeah. And, you know, that the one that we did, we it was started in Knoxville back in 2015, uh -huh. very, very small. And then they started growing. And then what I did, I joined the organization last year with the auspices of of expanding. So we started in Chattanooga and it was by faith. You know, we, we went out and we just like, Hey, we're going to do this. We have a, we have a mission. This is what we want to do. And it was just by faith. So no, no, really no financial support, no donations. We just kind of bootstrapped it. And the event came and I think the estimates were between four to 5,000 people that came out. We had a kids program. We had almost 800 kids come through there. And now next year when we do it, we plan on it to be a lot bigger. And now we're seeing that not only Chattanooga, you know, why we partnered with the YMCA here back in October and we did Healthy Taste Kids mm. and we did a plant based cooking school for the kids. We had mm. over 130 something kids register. Now I always say if anybody, you know, is in church and they teach the little, you know, the cradle roll classes in these classes, you will see that 
dealing with that many amount of people in a short amount of time can be a very cha- Ooh, big, yeah. really really challenging oh yeah but by god's grace we were able to pr- put a, a beautiful event together and the ymca are like they want to partner with us in the future as well look and who wouldn't i just read maybe i didn't grab what i read was the headline the number of people with pre-diabetes young people pre-diabetes yep going through the roof. That's right. This is an absolute crisis. That's right. And as you know so well, the vast majority of type 2 diabetes cases don't even need to exist. That's right. And can be reversed. Absolutely. So why in the world wouldn't you reverse it if you could? A lot of, a lot of it is education. Yeah. Right? You know, I remember we've worked with people because we also do a program through our restaurant called the Fit Challenge. And we've worked with several thousand people over the last, um, since 2016. And when you start talking about type 2 diabetes, they say, yeah, I got type 2 diabetes. This yeah. is my blood sugar. And I said, well, okay, well, if we follow these principles, we're very confident that your body will is designed to heal itself and it will heal itself if those conditions are correct. And they're like, no, but, you know, they think it's a life sentence that they're going to be on insulin and, and metformin for the rest of their lives. Oh, there are physicians. Oh, yeah. Who will tell you this is a life sentence. Yeah. Nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, maybe in a, in, a, in a rare case, but type 2 diabetes generally extraordinarily treatable if you adopt the right principles. Oh, absolutely. And, and yeah. the beautiful thing about it is the literature is starting to come out. You're starting to see so much, so yeah. many studies. You know, you got T. Colin Campbell. You got, you know, Dr. Elson. You got all these, these prominent people in, in that. But you also have other, other physicians that are starting to say, you know what? Yeah. This is real. I cannot deny the results, yeah. you know. So we've okay. seen... Let's back up again. We'll get we'll get to this uh-huh. again later. Let's go back to you. So you're, you're making your way. You're out of school. You've uh-huh. got a you got a girlfriend and a baby on the way, and That's you're right. starting to get involved in in sales. But you you discovered somewhere along the line that you had a talent here. Yes, that started to do quite well. Walk me through some of that. So um, naturally introverted. That that people ask me, you know, and I, every personality test I take, I'm like ninety percent introverted. But I'm extroverted when I need to be. Right? There you go. And so when I started developing, I didn't know I had a talent for it. Most of it was necessity, right? When you're when you're up against it oh, and yeah. you need to make something happen, yep. stuff come out of you. You'll find talents you do oh, not know you have. Oh yeah. yeah. But then as I started, you know, really started learning some of these principles and learning learning sales principles and sales uh, principles from a Christian perspective. So you so sales sales expertise can be learned. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. You don't have to just be born that oh, way. Absolutely. Right. I, I, look, I look at sales as me presenting information, right? You know, uh, I'm a Christian, and when I'm studying the Bible with somebody, I'm not trying to convince them to do anything. I, I think, you know, I, I say uh, what I'm doing is presenting information, and I'm hoping that you make the decision, the right decision. That's sure. all I'm doing. Yeah. And, I, and that's how I look at it when I'm looking at it from a, uh, a perspective from, uh, from health. You know, I just present the information, and then, and then from there, I hope people make the right decisions. Yeah. So, so tell me about, a little bit about your work experience and some of the environments you found yourself and some, so, of the, some of the experiences you had. Yeah, so I've worked for three Fortune 500 companies mm-hmm. in various sales and leadership positions. Um, I've had, you know, and I tell people, it's very difficult to be a, a Christian in some of these environments. Sure. You're in a hyper-competitive environment, and when you excel, they kind of puff you up, right? And that can be very, very dangerous sure. from a Christian. Um, so uh, I have uh, excelled in all every uh, company that I've worked for, and what I've learned from these three companies: number one, you got you know uh, leadership, operations, administration, and sales. But one thing I I've noticed from every company I worked for was the number one in this industry, right? And then and I, I said, man, what is the difference here? Why is why are you number one and number two? And I remember one exec, I mean, some of these guys are some of the most brilliant business people I ever work with. Sure. He goes, when you're number one, you try to do things that are very difficult, that's hard to replicate. And that always stuck with me. And when I started you know, doing what we do and being a Christian, I say, you know what? Everything that I do, I wanted to be as close to perfection as possible. So, and, it, and my, my, my goal is to try to reach the ideal that God wants to have in my, in my business. So that means, Everything elevates. The quality, the marketing, everything comes up versus that me just saying, hey, I can, I'm okay being number two. I'm okay being number three. Mm. I'm trying to do things with excellence. So that's why when people come and people bring us in, I mean, work with organizations with the Fit Challenge. And one thing they said, you guys are incredibly professional. Like, 
I, have, I just want to commend you guys on the professionalism that you guys exhibit because yeah. we've worked with other organizations or, or different ministries and we said the professionalism was way, way down. So you can appreciate that. Is it hard, really, to raise your game and be more professional rather than less professional? Oh, it's not hard at all. Yeah. Man, it doesn't always take a lot to raise just your game. Just raise it up. And that's the separation of organizations that are successful and not successful, yeah. doing that little bit more, just a little bit more to bring the professionalism up. And it goes a long way. And we see that because, you know, with our Fit Challenge, and I know we're going to talk about this a bit more, Fit Challenge, we deal with a lot of people who are, are wealthy. Yeah. You know, I've we have done deliveries to homes that are, you know, it's a compound right here yeah. in this area. And they, you come in there with a, a, a paper bag that's got a stain on it and, yeah. and things like this. And hey, this is your delicious plant-based food here. And, it, and the presentation is not there. Even the even when my wife makes her meals, it is just, it's just beautifully put together. And it looks aesthetically pleasing. And people eat it and they just like, they, they compliment, wow, that food looks amazing. Yeah. The presentation, everything is in, in nicely. It, so and it's, it's not snobbery. It's human nature. That's right. It's human nature. That's right. You you cared enough about me to bring something that I'm not going to look sideways at. That's right. You know, you obviously care enough about you to do something that reaches a certain stand. No question about yeah, it. Yeah. No question about it. And that's and that's the key. And I think um, what we do in our organizations is, you know, with healthy taste and all these things kind of co they all come they all pretty much they coalesce together. Sure. But we make sure that professionalism is at a point. And guess what? You, you, you try your best and then you sit back and you say, okay, how can we be better? Yeah. We, we're, not, we're not satisfied. You know, we were, at, we were in Arizona and we had did this homeless, homeless dinner and I was talking to some young people and I said, um, and they were really excited for what we did. And I said, that's great. I said, but guess what? People are still hungry today. Yeah. Like right now as we're talking, the same people we fed yesterday is hungry. So what am I telling you is turn the page, right? We turn the page, we learn, we take those principles, that, that, the things that we did well, let's improve upon it and let's continue to move forward and not worry about what we did in the past, but continue to press forward. You were experiencing success in the business mm -hmm. world. Yes. Big companies. Yes. You realistically could have looked forward to a long life oh, yeah. of great success in the business world. Would have been nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing wrong with nothing that. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, unless, of course, you perceived it was harming you spiritually, in which case you'd do this or that. But Daniel managed to survive. That's right. Joseph, they both survived in some, some pretty challenging environments. Mm -hmm. But you looked at this thing and you could have said, hey, God has blessed me here. Let's just ride the train and, and do well and, and use our influence. That'd be, that'd be perfectly fine. Yeah. But you didn't do that. No. Um, tell me why not. Well. Or, uh, or, or tell me how and why not. Well, I can tell you why, why, why I looked at that and we, we you know, I was at a, I, w I was going to take over a $52 million sales organization, literally. And I became, a, you know, a Christian and Adventist Christian specifically. And I realized and I started looking at my family and I said, you know what, I'm not spending as much time as I need to. And I have six children, right? So now I have six. And I'm looking at this, I'm like, I need to really put my energy into what's important, which is, which is our family, which is our family. If you'd put your energy into what someone might describe as providing for your family, mm -hmm. not a thing anyone could say against it. Yeah. You could held your head up high. But one day... God is going to say, where's your flock, your little flock that I've given you? And that's what he, that, that was. Maybe good. you could pull it off. But man, that's hard. Yeah. Real successful people spend a lot of time away. Real successful people got to dedicate themselves to doing what they're that's doing. Right. It's, it's, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not criticizing anybody who would have chosen a different route. But clearly you looked at what you perceive was best for your family. That's right. And that, that was the key. It was, yeah. I saw, I, I spent hours and hours on the road I'm on the phone, I'm saying good night, and, right. and I'm like, I'm missing all of these experiences. You know, they're only, they're only young a, cer a certain amount of time. You know, my oldest is 16. I mean, no, no. Your you got a year and a half. Your oldest is gone. Yeah, she's, she's, now she's gone. gonna go college. College. And now life is there, you That's know? It. And you're like, what was more important? Oh man. For me to go and, and be incredibly successful in, in the business world or to spend more time in our family. Yeah. And what I've learned is when God, decided, you know, as we prayerfully made that decision, God didn't take those talents and just throw them to the side. He says, I'm going to take those talents and I'm going to use them in a different way. Thank you for mentioning that. I was about to say that very same thing. You're at the place now where you say, 
how many more Thanksgivings do we have with our oldest daughter? Yeah. Maybe two. Yeah. And maybe more. Maybe more. But maybe two. Realistically. And then you go, well, as a family, how many? Yeah. So that time is so, so, so limited. But as you said, thank God, you didn't jettison all that he taught you. You said, God said, hang on to that. I got maybe even bigger plans. Oh, yeah. Maybe even bigger plans. Yeah. All right. We're going to talk about some of those plans in just a moment. With Gabriel McClover, I'm John Bradshaw. I'm glad you're here for our conversation. Brought to you by It Is Written. Welcome to Line Upon Line, brought to you by It Is Written. Here at Line Upon Line, we get to answer your Bible questions. Was it God's plan for sin to enter the world? Does that mean that evil spirits exist in human beings? How should we as Christians treat people with different sexual orientations? Is the building of a temple necessary before Jesus returns? I'm struggling with my flesh. I surrendered and failed. Am I lost? That's a good question. And I think we've got a pretty good answer for you here. And that's really what God wants. God just doesn't want us to be healthy. He wants us to also be happy. Let's not spend any more time wondering. Let's instead channel our energy towards it. Believing. It's good to dig into the Bible. Absolutely. Where do we begin? This has been Line Upon Line, brought to you by It Is Written. Welcome back to Conversations, brought to you by It Is Written. My guest is Gabriel McClover, successful in business, and he's shifted, following the leading of God, now still successful, doing something a little different and oriented around the message of good health. So let's talk about your transition from business mm -hmm. into a, a health focus, You're using your energies in a different way for the, benef for the betterment of people. How big a step of faith was that? Or were you like, yeah, we got this? No, it was it was definitely a step of faith. Um, we had we we um, we were in the we were in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I was me and my family got together and we were praying. We said, Lord, we desire to spend more time together as a family, and we wanted to get out of uh, the city and get more into a rural area. Sure. So we were praying in the Lord, and we just was got so tired of looking at all of these real estate sites, and we just started praying, Lord, just send us where you need us. And within six months, we landed in Somerville, Georgia. Mm. And then from there, we, I had a passion for agriculture. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to figure out a way to be self-sustainable in the country, growing my own food. So I went to an agricultural conference, um, and which I'm now on the board at that conference, that, that, that agriculture conference, and started to really understand growing food. So we just started growing all of this food. And then we were doing cooking classes and things in the community. Like, hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you get too far, hit huh? me here. Do you have any background with gardening? And, no, and, absolutely not. So you went from from stop to, to, to go, from woe to go. <laughs> I want to tell you. Suddenly overnight you're growing your own food. You're out in the garden with your boots on. And yeah, yeah, and I, I remember, you know, I'm, I'm training the tomatoes. Yeah, and, yeah. And I'm like, Lord, why didn't you pull me out of corporate America a long time ago? Because I was really enjoying what I was doing. Oh, you will, yeah. I was enjoying the gardening. I was, and I had no, I had no clue what I was doing, right? I, I, I played football in college. I wore a suit every day for 10 years, and yeah. all of a sudden, I'm out in, in, the, in a rural, in the country. I don't know how to do anything. I can tell you stories of stupid things I did in the country. No you, you'll just be cracking up. But, and then I, I just enjoyed it so much. And yeah. we were doing, at that time, we were doing a lot of um, health ministries in the community. Like, I mean, people didn't even know who we were, but we were like, we were doing reversing diabetes seminars because the passion was there. Because as we started learning these things and started applying to my life, because I went plant-based like cold turkey. Mm. Like, I didn't hear any, it, I watched a documentary, I was right in the middle of my corporate experience, and uh, I watched and I just immediately said, I told my wife, they're trying to kill me. It's like, what do you mean? I'm like, this food, I'm like, I need to, and I ate rice and beans for two and a half years. I didn't yeah. even know, like the stuff we serve in our restaurant, I had no clue it existed. And then over time, my wife, she looked at me and she's like, because she saw I was losing weight. And then my mind cleared up and then I was able to, I call it a recall button. So in my sales presentations, I'm sitting there and I used to have to take meticulous notes just to remember what happened. But then when I started changing my diet, I can literally replay the whole conversation in my mind. So I, 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 I took up, it was a huge spike in the amount of success I had because I changed my diet. That's really interesting. And I had no clue about the health implications of it. I was doing it mainly for, 
wait a minute, I just don't want to eat that. I'm going to eat something that I feel is safe. But then over time, I started learning about more of a plant-based diet. I started studying our bodies and how it works and how if we work with our bodies, that healing can take place. And then we started teaching those things. And then my wife would do these amazing cooking classes. They would taste the food and they were like, this is, this is vegan, this is plant-based. And then they're like, you should open a restaurant. And now, mind you, we're like, never had any restaurant. I sold a restaurant, sold high-end hotels. I did a lot of things, but I never ran a restaurant. And then their opportunity came in town. There was a family that owned a health food store and they said, do you wanna work with us to open a restaurant? Now at that time I was like, well, let's do it, right? And I was like, let's do it. And the, and the overhead was so low. Uh, I'm like, I can, I, I can make mistakes for you know three years and be oh, okay. Yeah, it was only like 500 yeah. bucks a month All right. to run a restaurant and, there, and it was already a pre-existing restaurant. So not a lot of this upfront cost that now that mm. when you have to build out a, a restaurant. So, that's how we got into the restaurant business. And, and you were aware <laughs> when you did that the failure rate for restaurants yes. is through the roof. That's right. But you said, okay, we, we, we can do this. Now, now mind you, we're, we're in a little small town, 4,000 population. But you do it, what kind of restaurant? This is a plant-based restaurant? This is a plant-based no, restaurant. If you told me you're doing a plant-based restaurant in San Francisco, Santa Cruz, Monterey, even New York City, even Atlanta. Yeah. <clears throat> but a little redneck town. Yeah. I mean, I'm making an assumption. They have a little redneck town. Yeah, 4, meat and potatoes. People. Yeah, and you know, they thought when we opened up, they literally thought we served grass on a plate. Oh yeah. And and people say, why would you do that? That's foolish. And I why said, why would you do that? And I said, some. This is our answer there. I said, sometimes God takes the foolish things to confound the wise. Yeah. We saw it was God's providence for us to do this. And I can tell you, if it wasn't for the experience that I had in the business side, we would have failed. And so we're very. Um, so I do business coaching. I try to tell because that information, those those fundamental of leadership, operation, yeah. administration, and sales is so fundamental to the success of a business. And if you don't have a good, you may have a great recipe, you may have food that tastes good, but if you're not marketing, if people don't know where you're at, if you're not counting the money, if you don't have a, a operations, you don't have all these things in place, you can fail very very quickly. Not only in restaurant, but in any industry. Yeah. So I, I'm really happy to hear that you're able to go to a small town, an unlikely town, with yeah. an un, unlikely clientele and make a success. Because you're not just selling food, but you're showing people a better way of That's life right. and ultimately helping people to see Jesus through new eyes. That's right. And so, so two things: if you can do it there, then it can be done in other places. Oh yeah. But secondly. I mean, any turkey can open a restaurant, mm -hmm. but not anyone can run a business. And so I think you're, the, I, I'm hearing almost a cautionary word. Oh yeah. If you're gonna do it, you gotta know what you're doing. You gotta I, know I don't think that doing. means you need to be Warren Buffett or Bill Gates or some titan of industry, but you gotta have a head on your shoulders and understand there are certain principles you need to follow. No question about right. it. You, yeah, you, you gotta have a, pro it can be a ministry, but we have to be profitable, right? Answer me this. Years ago, I was, I was shocked as I spoke to a guy I'd met who was running a health food restaurant. If I mentioned the brand name, most many people would recognize, oh yeah, we remember those. He said, we're, we're closing the restaurant. I said, what are you closing the restaurant for? He said, we're closing the restaurant because we want to do ministry. Interesting. Yeah, it was so consuming, it took up so much time it was so suffocating. Oh yeah. That, I mean, the reason he did it in the first place was to share Jesus. Now he said, we're doing this and we're not sharing Jesus. Now we don't have time to share Jesus. Ooh. How do you avoid that trap? I don't fault anyone here, but So how do you avoid that? We fell into that trap, right? Mm -hmm. So we went in there and we were, you know, we were trying to compete with different, you know, restaurants that are out there. Right. And then I started looking at it, I'm like, wait a minute, we can't, compete with them and they're like what do you mean because the busiest day in a restaurant is is friday night and we happen to be seven day adventists so we close friday night the sabbath to saturday so that's the busiest time in a restaurant so i'm like we can't compete with that so we right. have to have a different model so what i understood from a business perspective that in a, a successful restaurant you need to have you need to control food costs and mm -hmm. you need to control labor sure so and then i started doing market research in our area and I saw that everybody in our, in our town needed to go to a lifestyle center. But one, they couldn't afford it. Now, a lifestyle center is places like Wildwood and you know several thousand dollars to go to these places. Now, in our town, we're right below the poverty line. So people can't afford to go there, even though they need it. And most people, if they could afford it, they can't take off two weeks or a week or to go and get detox. So right. I said, wait a minute, there's a problem in the market. Because what entrepreneurs are, they're problem solvers. And I said, 
How can we take our, what we do and then create a solution? So that's where we created what we call now the FIT Challenge. Yeah, tell me for, about this. So FIT Challenge, it stands for Food Inspiring Total Transformation. So we use food as an entering wedge in people's life to inhibit total transformation. So people think, oh, it's just food. But no, we actually have, uh, we also deal with the physical, the mental, and the spiritual through that program. But you're telling that 300-pound lady who's all her life mm -hmm. eaten the food that people living just below the poverty line That's right. eat. But you're telling her, hey, lady, we're going to intervene in your life to bring about total transformation. That's right. Does she want that? You know, that's, that's where sales comes in, right? Okay. So that's and, and does she understand that? That's where sales comes in, right? All right. So I, I understand from the sales proposition, you know, you have somebody who is in need of your product, yeah. right? But now you have to present information for them to make that transition. Yeah, and, you gotta, and, and they've got to understand that they need that product. They need it, right? So you may, I may think they need it, but you got to help them understand that they need it. So how do you make people change what they've been doing their whole life? Yeah you make it very real. You talk about, you know, you, number one, you give them hope, right? Mm -hmm. So like, hey, I have diabetes, type two diabetes, my blood sugar's getting out of control, um, having all these other different, I'm starting to lose my, have, uh, my, I'm losing my eyesight, my foot, and I said, you know, and then I look at them and I said, you do know that that can be overcome. And they're like, what do you mean? So now I got their attention. Yeah. And then I go through a sales process. I do health consultations, I didn't realize it, I had some people working with us and they're like, every time somebody comes in your office to do a health consultation, they end up signing up for the program. What in the world are you t t telling these people? And I'm like, and I'm like, what am I saying? So I started to write things, the, but it was the same process that I taught six figure sales rep. So you didn't even know, you I didn't even, even know it. where it wasn't, uh, you it was just so natural for me. So you didn't have the six points. If I get them to point number five, nope. I got them. You're just sharing with them. I was just sharing with them. And I didn't realize the things that I was teaching that I, that I taught in the corporate world, six-figure sales reps, that I was actually applying to a health consultation. So my close ratio was like 95%. Mm. Because everybody, if you're sick, if you have, and I have a solution, you know, there's no reason why you shouldn't do the program. Right. And we saw a tremendous amount of success, but that was me sitting down with some 2,000 something people that we work with. I sat down with every last one of them and did health consultation with every last one of these people. And this was one thing I always say. I said, what is your why? And I'll sit back and go, what do you mean? I said, why are you doing the program? Why, why are you even interested? Why are we sitting here? Well, because I want to lose some weight. And I said, well, all due respect, that's not good enough. And they're looking like, what do you mean? I said, what happens if you lose those five, six pounds? Right. What's going to keep you on track? And they started thinking, they were like, and I'll never forget this one lady. And I used to have fun with people, and we're going back and forth. And this one lady, she was an older lady, and she's just like, oh, well, you know, I just want to lose some weight. And she was getting, and then all of a sudden she got serious. And I started, her tears started coming down. She goes, well, she goes, I know, I have a good one. She goes, my granddaughter, and she yeah. started crying. My there granddaughter wants me to live till I'm 100 years old. And she just started crying uncontrollably. And I'm like, that's your why. That's it. So I'm like, when you go through our 10 day challenge, because we start off with a two day ju juice detox that we deliver to their home or business daily. We deliver all through Northwest Georgia through chat. We deliver to your home or business. So we make it very easy. You don't have to go anywhere. You're gonna, we're gonna fit the fit challenge into your life. Nice. And so that, and I said, during, I said, you're, you, you drink an incredible amount of coffee and you're a lot of sugar. I said, you're going to go through detox. Full disclosure, two day juice. We're going to help you with through these juices, but I'm going to let you know you're going to have some withdrawals. But I said, but now you get to weigh it in the balance. Do I want to be there when my granddaughter walks down the mm. aisle, or do I want to eat the Snicker bar? I and that makes it real for people. A well known figure who uh, went through a real major and noticeable health transformation. I believe I remember him saying. He wanted to walk his daughter down the aisle. Uh, you know, yes. that'll get you. That'll get you. Yeah, and and you know when you get to my age, and you got friends who are dropping dead of heart attacks. It's you real know, from my childhood. Yeah, like, this kid, this kid, what's he doing dying of a heart attack? Well, a guy I went to high school with. He's uh, driving up the hillside, talking to his daughter on the phone. Daddy, daddy, daddy has a heart attack while he's on the phone. Mercy. Oh yeah, the guy was in his forties. Had a heart attack and died Mercy. on the phone with his daughter. Uh, no criticism. Who knows why? But listen, man, we know why. Yeah, and I. I and and that's I, the why. And that reminds me of a story of a, a somebody was going through our you know ten day challenge, our fit challenge. Really excited about working with this guy. He comes. He comes to the restaurant. We do a health consultation. He's really excited, and he goes, oh, "I'm ready to do it." He goes, but I want to wait a few weeks because I, I'm going on a trip. I want to eat. I, I really want to indulge. And I'm like, and his, his daughter was like, come on, dad. And, 
And I was so really, I was really excited to work with these guys. So the kickoff meeting happens. We, we bring everybody into the restaurant. We do this kickoff meeting. So we had several, a lot of people in the room and we're doing this meeting, but I was really looking forward to working with this family. So I sent them a text and say, hey, if you're here, don't worry, just come in and we'll, we'll catch up on everything. And then as I'm going through, and on my presentation, I had a slide that said prevention is better than cure. Oh yeah. And then my phone just vibrates. I looked at my phone and it was a daughter. She goes, we won't be able to make it. My dad just had a massive heart attack and we rushed him to the hospital. Mm. So that strikes me, that hit me so hard because like, we could have helped. Like, I'm not saying it would it would have changed anything, but we know the body will heal itself if the, you give it the right conditions. Yeah. And what we were going to do, we were going to, and I don't know if it would have did anything, but to knowing that, you know, so I tell people, don't delay. Don't delay. Don't delay. We have one life. And I remember we were at this convention. We worked with this guy. He has his big building site supply companies. Helped him lose like, you know. 20, 30, 40 pounds. One of his workers reversed his diabetes. So he's like, man, I just believe what you do. I'm doing this tool convention. I want you to set up a booth. I'm like, I don't have any tools, right? He goes, just, just, just come and tell people about it. And I'm sitting there and, I'm, and this guy comes up and he was a Christian guy and he gets you, you, there. You, you're, you're exhibiting at a building supply store. A convention. building supply store oh, about right health. Okay. And he was like, he comes up, he goes, oh, what are you, what are you, what are you selling here? I said, I'm, I'm doing God's plan in health. That's what I'm selling. And he's like, what is that? And I, and I started telling him, he goes, man, he goes, and he just started going off, going off. I want to, you know, da -da, eat with this and they, what, it doesn't matter what, what happens. You're going to die at any time. He just was going off on me. Yeah. And I said, you're a Christian. He goes, so what do you say to that? Just like that. And I said, are you a Christian, right? He goes, I am. I said, what does the Bible say? And I said, let's go to Ecclesiastes 7, 17. And it, we started reading and I said, what does this last sentence says? It says, why shouldest thou die before thy time? Mm. And I said, God may have called you to reach somebody when you're in your 80s, but your lifestyle choices put you in the grave at 60. And then there's, the, there's a thing in sales, you say, just, you know, be silent, just be quiet. Oh, yeah. Let it marinate a little bit. And then he sat there for a few minutes and he's like, fine, I'll do the program. Fine, fine, fine. Just like that. Fine, yeah, I'll do yeah. it. You got me. I said, I didn't get you. I said, the word of God got you. Yeah. So that was, it, and we see that over and over again, right? So you, you started the Fit Challenge in a, in a unlikely place. Yeah. And you've seen it really take off. Yeah. What, what, what's the impact you're seeing? We'll just take a few seconds now and come back after the break. What's the impact that you're seeing in your local community? And I know you could answer this from a variety of angles. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you look at our, our grocery store, like, you know, the grocery store is totally transformed. It was a food desert, you know, and we have a local grocery store there. We went there. It was literally no any type of organic, no, no plant-based stuff there. And all of a sudden, we started seeing more and more. And then one of our customers that works with us, she went to the manager and she's like, why, why, why are you got all this plant-based food? And she goes, there's some guy doing this, there's this restaurant in town doing all these cooking classes and these people come in there and they're demanding that we order this stuff. How about so that? we have to order it. And so that's why we're seeing, that's the biggest change that we've seen. Hey, now that's a big deal. What you're seeing is you set out to do something and you are materially impacting your society. That's right. Your community. That's right. You know, when that's happening, when the supermarket is changing and you didn't go petition them, but, but it's, there's a groundswell, we yeah. need better food. That's right. Yeah, that's outstanding. Okay, there's more, there's more. We'll get to it too. We'll get to it in a moment. I'm, I'm encouraged by this. Very exciting to hear what's taking place. This is Conversations. I'll be back with more with Gabriel McClover in just a moment. Conversations, as you know, is brought to you by It Is Written. More than 5 million people in the United States currently live with dementia. Almost 50 million people around the world. And numbers are rising. Many people live in fear, wondering if they'll be next. If there was something you could do to combat cognitive decline, you'd want to know. Don't miss part one of Preventing Cognitive Decline, brought to you by It Is Written. Author and international speaker, Dr. Wes Youngberg, lets you know that there is hope in the battle for the mind. Sharing solid science and the results of comprehensive research, Dr. Youngberg provides reliable advice that has seen many people turn back the advance of dementia. Dementia impacts individuals, families, communities, and it kills. Don't miss Preventing Cognitive Decline and learn what you can do to give yourself the best chance at a bright tomorrow. Preventing Cognitive Decline on It Is Written.
Welcome back to Conversations brought to you by It Is Written. My guest is Gabriel McClover. Gabriel, you've started the Fit Challenge. Yes. You've mentioned a restaurant uh, in a town that you said that it was, was a food desert. That's right. Um, how's the restaurant going? Restaurant is going uh, well, you know, and the, the, the main thing, well, we just had a, what we call a once in a 500 year flood that happened in our town. So we know that when things happening, you know, things good things are happening, sometimes trials may come. Sure. But when it happened, it was a testament to even our community. You know, we saw our community members rally and, and want to see us reopen. And we had people come out. We had this work bee came out and cleaned the restaurant out. So we see, we see the positive impact that we had on the restaurant. And what we've seen, like COVID-19 was something that was very difficult on restaurants. Oh, right? yeah. And so you operated during oh, that, of course. Yeah. yeah, so COVID happened and we're at the beginning of the year, here comes March, and they're saying that you have to shut down. Mm. And the world was shutting down and we were like, oh, we got rent, we have our mortgage, like what is, what's going to happen here? And we just like, okay, Lord, this is your work and we're just going to put our hands off and see what happens. So the Fit Challenge side actually exploded because one of the things that they allowed during the lockdown was food delivery. Yes. And so when restaurants was trying to figure out a food delivery model, we've been doing it for three years. Mm. So we were able to be ahead of the game. And during that time, and we started traveling the country. We went to 22 states during COVID, doing in-home cooking classes. Fantastic. We were doing Bible studies. And we were coming in there and say, hey, you know, we have this food delivery. You know, what's the best way to deal with COVID? Let's talk about boosting our immune, immune oh, system. Come on now. Let's, let's talk about preparing our body to deal with any type of virus, let alone the COVID. And they're like, really? And so we came with the message, hey, you're going to do all these Uber Eats and DoorDash and all these different things, and they're going to bring you junk food that's going to lower your immune system. How about you order from us, where now we're going to help boost your immune system. So when you do go to that store, your immune system is going to be strong. And we just started, we went all over the country and people were excited. And so we'll come in and we'll say, hey, part of our module for our Fit Challenge is an in-home cooking class. Would you like us to do an in-home cooking class? We can wear a mask, we can social distance. And they're like, Come on in. And we had some of the most powerful um, opportunities to witness the people during that time. So we just praise the Lord because he saw he saw it before we we we, we can ever. You know, I'm so glad to hear you say that because God's biblical health message yeah. is a message all about strengthening your immune system. That's right. And I'm I, I, I'm not trying to say that's the only thing a person should do about right. COVID. You, you fig, figure that out yourself. I'm not here to tell you what to do. But the very least we ought to be doing That's right. is is taking care of our health. COVID was COVID was a message to everybody. You have one immune system. You better take care of that thing. No question. And put yourself in the best possible place to fight illness. No question. So at this restaurant in a little, I, I called it a redneck town. Yeah, and I, I mean, I mean, I mean, no disrespect by that. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying a typical old southern, That's right. little old southern town. What do you serve? So we do. Um, it's on the menu. So we. The beautiful thing is what we. We actually, the food that we grow, yeah. we produce in our restaurant. So again, food costs, right? Yeah. So if you're growing your own food, if I got a cucumber that they come like crazy in your garden and I can able to juice it and I'd have carried an apple and I'm selling that for $8 for yeah. juice, our profitability went up tremendously yeah. because we grow our own food. So we do do a lot of, um, we do juices, we do smoothies. And my wife also does dishes that meet people where they're at. So yeah. we'll have like a, 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 you know, some type of burger and, and we have like a, some type of cheesesteak. But we also have other dishes that lend more towards healthy food. Like most time you go to a vegan restaurant, you have what I call vegan junk food. You, have, sure. you get your sandwich, you get your burger, you get you some fries, you get you some nuggets. But we also, we, my wife does vegetable lasagna. She does, um, you know, different um, spaghetti and meatballs. It's probably one of the most popular things that she does. And everything is plant-based. And our meatballs are made from, um, made from chia seeds, mm. right? So they taste amazing. So people go through our 10-day challenge and they're getting the same food. And they're like, these meatballs are amazing. This is not real meat. And then they're, all of a sudden they're losing weight because they don't realize that every for every meatball, it's probably like eight grams of fiber in them. Yep. So their fiber is going up, which is one of the main things to do to re, re, reverse diabetes. They're getting their fiber up and the food tastes amazing. Like I remember the first 10-day challenge we ever did. And this is a quick story. We went through first 10-day challenge. We had so many trials during that program. Like there was a point we couldn't even make purchases. Our cards weren't working. Air condition broke in the restaurant. Somebody had a 10 day challenge daughter literally went missing during the program. Mm. We're praying like every single day. The, the guy who comes, he was going to fix the, uh, the air condition. And we're like, praying. Now, this, is the middle, this is July and in, in, in humid in, in northwest Georgia. It was humid. And he puts his car in park. 
And then as soon as he put his car in park, it was like a boom. And all the power on our side of the street went out. And we were like, oh, we literally were crying. We got to pray. And we were on our knees. We prayed. And then we were like, we did the program. We were like, we're never. And then the, the, uh, the results were amazing. People losing weight. Their diabetes were being reversed. We saw people's cholesterol drop. And then after they left, we were like, we're never doing that again. That was, it was too much. It was draining. It was draining. We're like, we're never doing that again. Mm. But then the newspaper found out what we were doing. They interviewed some of the participants. And then, so in the right, in the headline of Somerville News, veggie diet is success. Restaurant puts people on, on a plant-based diet. And he started putting all the results. So the Come phone started on. ringing. It's like, when are you going to do your next program? And I was like, uh, we're probably not going to do that again. My wife's like, just too, it was too soon. And then the Lord sent our neighbor. Our neighbor comes in the restaurant and she goes, I didn't know vegetables can do that. She goes, I have diverticulitis and I can't even go and sit in church without running to the bathroom. She goes, can you help me? And I was like, well, you know, uh, we're thinking about it. You know, she goes, well, I'm just letting you know. And this is her exact words. If I don't find a solution for this, I just want to die. Mm. And I was like, I looked at my wife and I'm like, we got to do the program again. Do it. And so we've been doing programs every single, every single month, except for Christmas. I always say nobody want to be healthy when Santa Claus is in town. <laughs> but in January, that's when everything starts to kick up. So this is our, our busiest time of the year. Fantastic. You're encouraged by what you're seeing. I am. Yeah. By God's grace, we're, we're, we're pressing on move. Yeah. So you got the restaurant, mm -hmm. Fit Challenge. Tell me about this meal delivery thing. So the meal delivery is, is, is part of the Fit Challenge. Yeah. So we deliver two meals a day, lunch and dinner. We make recommendations for breakfast. Everybody who goes to our Fit Challenge gets assigned their own personal health coach, which is virtual health coaches. And these are coaches that have been through a lot of, um, li you know, they understand lifestyle principles. It's like Wildwood. We'll have coaches from there and, and from all over the world. We have coaches in France. And they'll Fantastic. connect with people, personal experience. So they'll get, they'll have their own health consultation and the coaches holding them accountable. And one of the things that I think that makes our program more this more success successful is the coaching aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Because I tell people, I said, listen, when you're younger, you have accountability to your parents, right? right. But once you get, a, now you're an adult, you, you can pretty much do whatever you want. If you want to go and get three gallons of ice cream and sit and, and eat it, you can do that. But to have that level of accountability, knowing that I'm going to have a call with a coach here in an hour and they're going to ask me to exercise, yeah. that level of accountability helps people be more successful. No question about yeah. it. You know, a program without accountability Man, you can you can anticipate that the success level is going to plunge. Oh, no question. Nobody holding their, your feet to the fire. That's right. You know, and, 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 and providing that encouragement that you need. So, so the person who, who gets on board with the Fit Challenge, you're know, delivering food. You said you deliver it kind of far. Yeah. Not just across so, the street. Yeah. You so deliver it a good within distance. our restaurant, we deliver within an hour radius from our restaurant here in in Northwest Georgia. But when we go, so we'll partner with organizations, different yeah. churches. They will bring us in and say, hey. We have a problem in our community with health and we like your program. Can you actually do that program over here? And so that's what we really been, we do a lot of. We say, OK, if, you can, if we can find a commercial environment and a lot of churches have a commercial kitchen. Mm -hmm. So we come there, we, we come with our licenses and our insurance and we're able to make the meals. We bring a team out there to, to, to deliver the meals and we do in-home and we get church members involved, which is the key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get church members involved with delivering food, doing in-home cooking classes and we train them and they go in and be involved. And so so very you're, you're delivering me food. Yep. I open the box, mm -hmm. what's in it? So we have uh, lunch and dinner. So the lunch is uh, uh, dependent on what day it is. So sure, we, sure, we start sure, off sure. with our, our diet is pretty uh, specific. We meet people where they're at. We don't want to give them an impression of plant-based food that it's not. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. want you sending me a celery stick and a yeah. carrot stick and a leaf. That's why I tell people I could put you on salad for ten days. I'm sure you lose weight and, yeah. and you'll feel better. But as soon as that ten days is over, you're running trying to get some food. So it's it's meals that so you get vegetable lasagna, you get spaghetti and meatballs. My wife does a, a Thai curry dish. She Ooh, does. Uh. I mean, well, hold on a minute. A vegetable um, Thai curry. You're helping me to lose weight and get healthy. You're sending, you're sending me a Thai yep. curry with spring rolls. With spring rolls in it. Hold and on, that's hold like, on. Everybody want to get in on that. That's what I'm saying. Who does not want to get healthy eating Thai curry and spring rolls? That's the key to the program. My, my wife, has, Lord has really blessed her to make plant-based food taste incredible. That's wonderful. And that's the secret. I, I told my wife, I was like, I, I can sell it, but if... If the food don't taste good, I don't care. They're not coming back. I don't care what restaurant you have. On, yeah, that's correct. If the food doesn't taste good, nobody's coming back. That's right. But people are, they're so, and I mean, and they look at all these simple ingredients that my wife's like, how did you make that from that? Oh, Come yeah. to the cooking class. Oh, and yeah. so we do, a, we do a community cooking class during that 10 day period. And then we invite the whole community out. They say, it's free. Bring the whole community out. We do a cooking class. And then we still do an individual cooking class with the participants. But the group cooking class is a, 
I call it a commercial because I'm a salesperson. Sure. It's, they got to say it always be closing ABC. Yeah. So they come and they and we're like, hey, this is it. We're, we, we do a presentation. We're like, hey, we do the fit challenge. Anybody in here is doing going through the fit challenge. We'd like to give a testimony. And usually it's around day seven and day seven. Everybody's feeling amazing. I mean, everything. So they're like, oh, man, the food is great. And da, 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 da. if you guys are interested in signing up for the program, come see me. And we, we get a good uh, what do you call it? Conversion rate from our cooking yeah, classes. Yeah. But people need to see it. Right. And they need to taste it. And they said, that tastes good. I saw it. I'm seeing people and I can do this. And I want I want this experience in my life. So so eating, I hate to put it this way, but eating God's way uh, in a way that really looks after you and, right. and it feeds you and grows you and helps you to get well and healthy. I mean, it can it can be done. Oh, yeah. And, and my wife likes to specialize it because you got to think about it. People are from all types of the all, all places on the planet, especially in the United oh, States. Yeah. We were in Houston, Texas, and Houston, Texas is like a melting pot. Melting pot. And so my wife would actually create dishes that are specific to people's culture. Oh, yeah. So think about it. If I'm Indian and I'm Indian cuisine oh, and, yeah. and they use the different spices and things oh, like that. Oh, yeah. And I'm giving you a lentil loaf with no salt, no mm, nothing. Mm. And I'm saying, hey, this is going to help you reverse your diabetes. Yeah. So now not only am I going to try to change your diet, but I'm also trying to change your culture as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if I'm able to give you meals that you're used to, yeah. that your culture is, you know, hey, and then and they're able to see a result, it makes them be more, they makes them stay, stick to I, it. I don't know if you know this, but in heaven, uh, Indians will be in charge of food prep. Oh. Did you know that? I did not know no, that. No, it's in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, I'm kidding. Someone said it seriously. <laughs> Ooh, Indian food. No, you're right, though. Yeah. you got to take it. Ethiopian food. Yeah, <laughs> I've had it, and I was like, "This is a different type. It's a different type of good. Like so everyone good. is a different type of good. So good. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you're 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 mailing this food out. You're delivering this food to people. We deliver it yeah. to them. Like and, we and, go and deliver daily to their and home so, and their business. Uh, another big plus there is just a personal touch. You're de- you're establishing relationships. That's right. So people ask me, say, hey, you know, you can just put that stuff in. The, you can freeze it and, and ship it. But I'm like. That's that's not what our that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to build relationships. Up. Yeah. So when I go like that 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 lumber company that that I did a, a commi- I delivered meals to him every single day, and every single day I'm like, how was it? How you feeling? And I remember I told him I said, hey, this thing is scaling. I, and I said I want to get your business opinion as a business person. I said this thing is scaling. We have a lot of demand for this this fit challenge. And he goes, Gabe, whatever you do. Do not lose the personal touch. Mm. He says, because you know about my family, you know about my, you you know about me, you know, and that's the key to your program that separates it. So, yes, it's more difficult. Like I said, if you want to be the top in the industry, you got to do something difficult. That's right. So, yes, our margins are a little bit are smaller because we're delivering daily. But our, that's not our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is building relationships for yeah. the kingdom. And as we interact with these people, they're asking us f- for prayer, for Bible studies. You know, I can't tell you how many people, even though we've dealt with people who are atheists, agnostic, don't have no Christian background, but yet at the end of the program, we, we respect them during the program. And at the end of the program, one guy, he was like, Gabe, I can't, uh, I don't know how you do it. He goes, uh, he goes, man, I took this program. I feel great. My blood pressure down. But like this world is like so, oh, I can't, I turn on the TV, this is like right during the, you know, the political season, right? And, yeah. and everything, he goes, I just can't, it just, it just, it, I get anxiety every time I turn the TV on. He said, how do you do it? I said, since you asked. Yeah. And then I started doing, you know, you know, God removes kings and sets up kings. We, I don't worry about this. Only thing, you know, and he just was like, wow. And this was an atheist guy who didn't believe that it was any, any God, but he asked me. And now we're, we're, the, we're the best friend. Every program he comes, he's the front row, right in the front row. And, and he's not, and he still considers himself atheist, even though. He's reading the Bible. But I just praise the Lord for the, the, the amount of influence the Lord has allowed us to have. You're a businessman, a salesperson, mm-hmm. an entrepreneur. You're a Christian. Yes. You, you, you're you all about good health. Yeah. As you looked into the future, you did not anticipate you getting to wherever you are right now and plateauing. Mm-hmm. You looked into the future and you saw What? I see. I see what we're you know. So plateauing. So we're at like okay. How can we grow? How that's can it. we? How can we spread? And what does that look like? And so that's what that the healthy taste gives us an avenue to do that. So what we want to do, like we're going to be up in in in, in Michigan um, this year, and we're going to run we're going to run four um, fit challenges up in Rochester, Detroit, Michigan area, and we're going to do four fit challenges, and we're going to do a healthy taste. Nice. So we're working with the church there, and we're gonna we're gonna look at and it's a church plant. They're trying to, they're, and we're gonna we're gonna see the impact 
of what this looks like from a different perspective. Because as we do our program, we see that people want to study the Bible with us. Like 70% of the people say, hey, listen, I've seen the impact. You, and we're very respectful. We just sprinkle a little Bible and we pull back out. We don't throw up on people. And, and they're just like, hey, you said something. And I, in, our, in the survey, I said, would you like to learn more about health through the Bible? And people say yes. And we're able, to, we're able to study with these people. And it's, it's, a, it's a blessing. So I see that we, I, our goal for Healthy Taste is to have one of these events in every major city in the United States. And then with that, we're going to come back, come with the Fit Challenge. And what, we, what we're doing is we're trying to actually create a network where we can actually plant restaurants in cities, working with schools and organizations. We're working with Wildwood um, Health Institute. They're going to be helping us with the project in, in, uh, in Detroit. So we're really excited about the, the scalability of this. Because again, if COVID, COVID locks the world down again, one thing that people want, need to do, oh, yeah. they need to eat. They need to eat. And so that's what, that's what we want to do. And at a time where people are concerned about their health, they're open to the oh, idea yeah. of thinking about good health. That's right, that's yeah. right, that's right. So really well, excited. Fantastic, man. It seems to me the sky's the limit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, God is undoubtedly with you on this. Yeah. And it's a blessing. Yeah. If you had a chance to say to one person or to say to one person one thing, this is an unfair question, but if there was an opportunity to say one thing, this might not be the only one thing, but if there was something, you say, this is a quick encounter, you're going to leave somebody with a, a gem, some encouragement about their health, what would it be? Specifically about your health, um, I know that from a mental standpoint, health really starts there. So what I, I tell people, I say, I ask people legacy. I said, what is, what is, what, what your life, when you die, what do you want people to say about you? I said, and I like to say, average lifespan in the, in the United States, 78 years old. Mm. How old are you? Mm. So if you have, say, 20 years left, mm -hmm. how do you want to be, how, how do you want to be remembered? I said, people are, people are still uh, being talked about because they made an impact on this world. Let's make an impact on this world. And in order to do that, we need to be in good health, even as our soul prospers. God says, I wish above all things out me as being health. I mean, being be in health even as your soul prospers. So God wants us to be healthy in order for us to reach our full potential. So that's really my message when I talk to especially males. I let them know about their legacy, how long, how long you want to be here for, and how we can use your health to be able to extend your years so that you can make a greater impact. Outstanding. How does somebody get in touch with you? So you can reach me at, um, you can go to um, healthytaste.net. Here we go. And my, my, cell, my cell phone number is there. If you want to email me at gabriel.mcclover at fitchallenge.com. Or if you want to reach us at the restaurant, it's a vineyardvegcafe at gmail.com. And we do travel. We go to different cities. Um, uh, and uh, we're really excited about what the Lord has, has placed in our, in our possession. Hope to see you at that restaurant sometime soon. Yes. Wish you every success. God bless you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Outstanding. And thank you for joining us. This has been a lot of fun. I uh, hope you're encouraged and that you'll move forward knowing that God can make a difference in you or through you. I'm John Bradshaw. My guest has been Gabriel McClover. This has been our conversation brought to you by It Is Written.